You, you mentioned the P word, peptides, and this is an area that I, I really don't know much about. So can you maybe talk a little bit about peptides and, and why they're now becoming so popular and, and maybe even shine some light on a couple that you think are really exciting coming down the road here? Yeah, I think um, the peptides, first off, are just uh, amino acids um, at a certain length. Uh, a lot of these are um, anywhere from like five to 50 amino acids in length. Um, most of them uh, have some biological activity and are signals that occur naturally. So they haven't, most of the peptides that are being sold can't be patented. And that really creates um, a gray area, if you will, of like, these are not supplements, they're not patentable drugs, they occur naturally, and but they, they're not supplements. So they end up getting sold legally as research chemicals that you can give to your rodents legally or whatever. Uh, but obviously people are using these, injecting these, um, I am using them under the uh, uh, oversight and advisement of my doctor. There's very few doctors that are working with peptides, but there's a growing list um, of very high-end, you know, functional medicine doctors like, like Dr. Stickler. Uh, Dr. Neil Paulvin is a friend that works with them as well. Um, I'm working with Dr. Marcella Madera, who does uh, some really cool work with these new type of stem cells, V cells, and she does peptides. Um, so there are some, there are some out there. Uh, two of my favorites, um, I would say, are Dihexa and Cerebrolysin. Um, those are both going to uh, work to enhance brain functionality more from. Um, uh, creating new neurons by enhancing um, BDNF and NGF. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, nerve growth factor, um, you know, that's keeping your brain young. That's going to be like, as we age, we get smarter and dumber. We get smarter by uh, crystallized intelligence. So, you know, uh, the type of thinking that um, you know, is the same task over and over and over. Basically, like it's uh, it's doing that same task. We're getting more efficient as at it as we age. So think of like taking the same way to work every day. Like we're we're getting more efficient at it. We can get like on autopilot. In that way, we're, we're getting smarter. But as we age, we tend to be less smart in fluid or dynamic intelligence, which is the ability to learn new tasks. That's why it's important to, you know, literally like use your opposite hand to brush your teeth or your hair with, to put your belt on the opposite way, to, you know, put your pants or shoes on the opposite way, like, um, you know, to take a different way to work, to learn a new language, to learn a new instrument, to just keep challenging your brain, go to different restaurants, like, you know, put yourself in different groups of friends and it's important to keep challenging yourself or else that box will keep tightening. And then that way you get smarter and smarter in one way, but you're you're losing this ability to be neuroplastic, to be uh, resilient uh, like you were when you were younger. And these compounds will help with that resiliency. One supplement that's super interesting, uh, that's actually more effective than injecting BDNF. This is this should blow your mind because this is just insane. More effective than injecting the actual protein BDNF is a uh, 7-8-dihydroxyflavone at increasing BDNF levels. So this is a, a fairly new supplement. There's some uh, early like preliminary research, super fascinating. Like a lot of the polyphenols have been associated with BDNF. And that could be one of the ways that polyphenols and all these um, blue zone cultures seem to be impactful on anti-aging. Uh, like we see like chlorogenic acid and coffee, catechins with uh, cacao chocolate, uh, EGCG with green tea, resveratrol with red wine, um, quercetin with onions and apples, 
uh, apigenin with parsley, like some of these compounds are, are really pterostilbene with blueberries, really cool compounds. But these polyphenols are potently anti-aging on a number of fronts. Almost all of them affect BDNF. But there's one compound really interesting to be better than injectable BDNF. So yes, these peptides are super cool. Um, definitely worth looking into. Most peptides are injectable uh, because they get broken down um, in the digestive tract into their individual amino acid components. So you just, you need to inject them. And some people are exploring transdermal, intranasal, other delivery pathways. But um, the most effective pathway for most of these peptides is going to be, um, you know, uh, injected like IM or IV, etc. So um, those are some compounds to look at, uh, but the supplement is very interesting as well.